I started to, to work at, um, you know, at doing Moon Knight as a backup for the Hulk magazine. Um, and at that time, um, my neighbor, uh, a, couple, a couple of farms down, her uh, mom had passed away. And I'd known her, her name was uh, Frankie. And I had known her from grammar school. I had a dog named, my dog named was Skipper. And it was like my best friend. Because I, I, like when I started getting into like, like fourth grade or whatever, um, I was also, I, I loved playing guitar, I loved sports, and I loved acting as well. And, um, and what happened was is that because of the, the family dynamic, I started to overeat and I needed to wear glasses. And when my, my baby teeth came out, my teeth got, you know, they, they, there was sort of a, lot of, a lot of crowding. And um, so I wanted to have, get braces. And my, my parents, my father did not believe in braces. So I, I, my, you know, my teeth started coming in like louver doors, you know. It was one more arena for me to sort of, or a reason for me to isolate and kind of just go deeper and deeper into, you know. So I'm this four-eyed, fat, buck tooth, you know, like pariah, you know. I mean, I was, I, I could joke and stuff like that and, and be, make me funny and, you know, but it was like I, 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 I withdrew even more. My dog was, uh, he used to, I used to let, we used to let him out in the, in the morning and he would come home right, you know, right before uh, I went and got the school bus. And this one morning I let him out and he didn't come back. So when I came home that day, I was really, you know, because it was so unlike him. I walked, I, I walked off the bus, I walked in the house and, and my mother is at the, at the sink and she's not, she's not, she's got her back to me and she goes, Skipper was shot, he's in, he's in his doghouse. And so I'm like freaking out. And I went, I ran out to his doghouse because he would, he would stay inside, you know, and then during the day, my mom, you know, would have him stay outside. And, uh, but he was also, he used to run free because it was, again, it was the, the, the country. And it was way before leash laws and things like that. It was like, you know, people had dogs, dogs used to just roam and they became trained. And again, growing up in the farm, in a, in a, on a farm community, I mean, I, I lived, I worked with, you know, cows. It, my, my father had, pig, we got pigs, except that my, you know, my father got them to butcher, and I became they became pets. So I haven't had pork in in years, you know. But also, you know, kittens. I mean, I was a big animal nut. I just loved animals. But uh, Skipper was like my best friend, especially when I started, you know, becoming overweight and everything else. He was sort of my best friend. And um, when I found it, when he was he was killed, I never I mean, didn't find out who who had done it. Um, he was shot with a shotgun. All through through school, it's like it sort of became like this this mystery. You know, and um, so I'm, I'm in, in, uh, in Marvel, you know, working at Marvel, and I, I meet up with, with Frankie, and her father is uh, who they used to raise German shepherds, you know, and they like they always had like you know Germans uh, dogs around and stuff like that, and her mom passed away, so we knew each other from um, from grammar school, and then from high school. And she had been living with some guy up in, in Thunder Bay, Ontario, a guy who was connected to the mob. This was actually when I started, I started to run and everything and just, you know, had my friends that I, I wouldn't go out drinking. I was like, you know, I'm gonna start doing comics. I'm, you know, things are going great. And I was like, uh, like get a girlfriend, you know? And, and she and I like reconnected, you know, we were friends, but uh, we got married very quickly. Um, and, uh, I think, we, like in retrospect, we ended up getting married to get away from our parents, you know, to get away from from Pennsylvania, uh, from uh, New Jersey, and, I, and that's when we moved to Westport, Connecticut, because one of my editors at uh, at Marvel lived in Westport, and he told me how much you know that was like the arts community. I mean, all the strip guys were there, like Kurt Swan, you know, Stan Drake, Leonard Starr, all of my comic book and comic strip heroes, and plus comic book guys, Gil Kane, you know, uh, I was like. I'm, let's go. We're like we're going, and we just packed up and, and moved. And my it, and I remember the sort of pushback from my family. You know, they did. My father was like, "How dare you leave?" You know, and I couldn't wait to get away. You know, and uh, I mean, but the marriage was not. You know, it was, it was two young kids with uh, alcohol, and plus, you know, she also had uh, um, some bipolarity and schizophrenia and stuff like that. I went deeper into a level of with my work. And this is around the time when um, I was doing Moon Knight. And I, 
I kept sketchbooks and I went to art school, I went to classes for watercolor and oil painting and stuff and I was, I, and I kept doing all these drawings on my sketchbooks and I'm like, I, I wanna start trying to do some of the stuff that's in my sketchbook and put into comics. And my wife and, my, and her friends and stuff, like the other people who knew, you know, the comics community and the art community were like, you know, that's not what comics are. And uh, at that time, we had my friend Brent Anderson, who was a comic book artist. Terry Austin, one of the most amazing inkers, he became my upstairs neighbor. And, uh, and Joe Chido, who's a painter. We had this little art colony um, in, in Westport. And, uh, and for me, it was like I wanted to be, you know, I, I, I just felt like the clone thing started to get really dicey for me because everybody was sort of dis dismissing me as just a Neil Adams clone. And even though I'd fallen in love with art, fine art, and, and you know, music and film and David Lynch and, you know, and all of these things I wanted to put into, into comics and being told I couldn't, when I was finally uh, told that, you know, you're, you're just nothing but a clone, it just, it just snapped. And I said, I'm either going to get out of comics or I'm going to do my own thing, you know. And it was like the, the rubber had to hit the road. And I think it was partly because, you know, with the... I was really unhappy in my marriage, and um, I mean, I think you know we're both unhappy. But um, she ended up having an affair with an artist, and uh, that sort of precipitated the, the divorce. And during the divorce proceedings, it turns out that like the coup de gras was that, that uh, her father had been the one who had killed my dog. So I, I kind of felt like am I drawing comics or am I fucking living them? You know, it just became this weird thing. And, and once the divorce happened, and it, it just it was so ugly. You know, I paid alimony and everything, but I think uh, it, it was it was toxic. And everybody that was in Westport, you know, like Brent and Joe and Terry, it blew everything apart. So that art art studio that I had with those guys and the art community, I was literally like all on my own. You know, it became so toxic and divisive that I think that like guys wanted to be on my side, and she was like, you know, you got to make choices, and whose friends do you want to be in there? Everybody's like, fuck this, I'm out. It was, it was bizarre because I ended up paying like alimony for three years, even though she could work. And, but she just, she knew how to game the system and, you know, and, and like work with her attorney and everything. And it was sort of like, you know, I think the state felt that why should she be a ward of the state when this guy's making a good living? Let him pay for her. And then, you know, after I finished that, I went out and that my last payment, I never missed a payment, but I remember the last uh, payment I immediately went out and bought myself a 9-11, you know. So it was like, okay, this is for me, you know.